Okay, I know I've been a little light on video, so we're going to do actually a three-part video today. Um, answering some questions we've been getting coming in. The first one is, what is the best beginner setup? Okay, what's the best paintball beginner setup? The first thing I would tell you is, I think it's almost a coin toss between the 2011 Proto Rail and the GOG Ecstasy. Okay, I, I've got an Ecstasy, I really like it. I've also shot the Proto Rails, I really like it. Um, the rail has the, I kind of like the rail if you only are going to play air ball, okay, if you're only going to play X ball and that's the only genre you're going to play, I'd probably say go with the rail. If you're going to play a combination of maybe scenario woods ball, a little bit of air ball, I'd probably say go with the ecstasy. The ecstasy has uh, the select fire mode, which is the same thing that you see in the G1 or you know also in the uh, Smart Parts SP1, the G1. It's one of the best things. I love it for a scenario because it's got a select fire mode to where basically you, it starts off in semi-auto, you tap it, it goes into three shot, you tap it again, it goes into full auto, you tap it again, it goes back into semi-auto. And that's a great thing for when you're, especially when you're playing scenario. If you're completely by yourself and you're in an area where you think you might get kind of ambushed at any time and you really need the firepower, you can put it in full auto. If you're in a position where it's a huge firefight and it's like 100 on 100 and you don't really want to waste your paint, you want to just pick and choose your shots, you can put it in semi-auto. So that's typically how I use the select fire. I use it on my, my G1, my SP1, they're basically the same thing. And uh, that, I really like having that select fire for scenario paintball. Um, the rail, I really like the rail because it's tiny, it's real soft on paint, the bolt doesn't move very fast at all and um, it's got the ultralight frame, it's got a great trigger, and it's just a neat gun for just, you know, for air ball. I mean, you can use it out in the woods too, but I think that the Ecstasy um, has it beat in the woods just because of the select fire mode. So, um, I know the Ecstasy also has a slightly better uh, feed neck on it. It also has an on-off ASA, which is really nice. Uh, pretty much uses the same regulator as the Lux. Um, it's, you know, the tried and true ion bolt. It's actually got a 14 inch barrel on it, which is really nice. So the XC really might be slightly of a, of a better gun, even though it's a lot heavier. It's kind of built like a tank. But you know, if you're gonna just play just air ball, I think the rail is the best one to go with. So the, both of those will set you back 250 bucks. Both of them have eyes, both of them have a regulator. Um, you know, both are just, you know, tried and true tested guns. They just work really, really good. So. That's probably, you know, if I had to put it up between the two, that's probably where I go. I think probably I kind of like the Ecstasy just a little bit better for multi-purpose, but you can't go wrong with either one of those two guns for 250 bucks. That's where, in my opinion, paintball starts. It's a beginner gun. If you're looking to get a beginner gun, try to get to that $250 mark and get one with a regulator. It's going to make your paintball experience so much better. I mean, I remember the first time I got a paintball gun with a regulator, I think it was probably my Angel in like 1998, and I just, you know, I couldn't believe it. Well, I had an automatic, but you know, back before then, but anyway, like, an, you know, a regulator that gets the gun pressure down to under 200 PSI. I mean, it makes such a big difference in the gun. Okay, uh, loaders, budget loader. Probably the best budget loader right now to get for 50 bucks. I know before they had the, um, the the view loaders you know they, they were blowing those out the, you know the velocities they're blowing those out those are gone now but probably the best loader right now the budget loader to get is going to be the tipman ssl 200 okay it's it feeds about 15 balls per second it's actually the the loader that they use at the ultimate woods bowling it's basically kind of like a pinocchio but it only uses one nine volt but it feeds at you know 12 and a half 13 balls per second no problem at all it's really lightweight holds 200 rounds it's 50 bucks and it's a steal it's better than this other trash that's out there i mean um, I know View Loader came out with like the iForce and then there's these other pieces of shit with the constantly on technology where you just turn it and the thing just keeps going like a power drill I, and no, no thank you. So, um, you know, the, the Tippin SSL 200, just think of it as a Pinocchio that uses one 9 volt and it, it, it works great. So, a lot of people use those on their pump guns because they're lightweight, you're only using one 9 volt instead of two, but that's a great one to get for 50 bucks. Um, then of course, you know, then there's my favorite, the Pinocchio, if you've got an extra 70, 80 bucks, whatever. Okay, the next thing. Tank, okay. Um, the thing with your tank is you gotta take a look at your local field and see if it, if they don't fill to 4,500 psi. Well, that kind of you know you don't really want to spend, especially as a budget baller, you don't really want to spend that extra money to get a 4,500 psi tank if they're only filling it to 3,000. Okay. There's two tanks that are out there on the market right now that are really nice. Gorilla Air is making a tank right now. It's a 62 3,000. It comes pretty much with the Myth G2 Reg. 
Um, it's got the pro burst discs on each side. It's got the small fill nipple, the small gauge, and they're selling those right now for 40 bucks on ANS Gear's website. I'll put the description down below. Um, then of course you've got the Gorilla Air makes a um, makes a, a 48 3000 which you can pick up for 50 bucks. But I, the 62 cubic inch, if you're only filling with 3000 psi, the 62 cubic inch almost holds as much as a 68. And it's only 40 bucks, so it's a little bit of a longer tank. It's got a little bit of weight to it, but you're going to have that additional air uh, that you don't get with the 48 cubic inch tank. I mean, you're talking about you know, you know, almost another 30, 40 percent more air capacity with that new Gorilla Air 62 3000. And the cool thing about that too is it actually comes in black or it comes in olive, which is kind of cool. So. That's probably the tank I would go with. You know, if you can avoid CO2 at all costs, avoid CO2 at all costs. I mean, CO2 is primitive technology. Go with compressed air, your gun's going to shoot a lot better. So, uh, but the Gorilla Air 62 3000, that's a really cool tank. Um, I got that for a couple friends of mine uh, who are just starting out paintball and they really like it. And it, like I said, I took a look at it, it basically has the G2 Reg on there. So it's really nice. Um, okay, so that was that's the first question. Second question is, Mike, I want to, you know, I'm coming down to Florida. I know a lot of people come down to Florida for vacation. Where are some really good places to play paintball in in Tampa? Okay, I'll tell you where we usually play at. Orbital Paintball uh, over here in Tampa is where we typically play at on Saturdays. Here in, in Florida, they have this thing where um, a lot of woods ball players tend to play on Saturday and a lot of air ball players tend to play on Sunday. So, um, I don't know, maybe the, you know, maybe the air ball players just don't like going to church. I don't know. But, um, in Florida, traditionally, if, if you go to a woods ball field, you'll see they have a slightly bigger crowd on Saturday. If you go to an air ball field, they typically have a slightly bigger crowd on Sunday. So that's kind of the tradition here. It could be different all over the U.S., but that's usually how it is here. The, the fields that I like to play at, um, uh, Orbital Paintball is where we usually play on Saturdays. It's a, mostly a woods ball field. They don't really have an air ball field. They've got a smaller ball field, but no one really plays there. Um, that's usually where we play out on Saturdays. Sundays... Usually I'm playing for the most part at Blitzkrieg Paintball, um, which is also located in Tampa. Um, another place uh, used to be called Fierce Paintball, I think it's called South, uh, Southwest Paintball. I gotta take a look at it, but it used to be called Fierce Paintball. It's down here in Palmetto. I played there a couple times. It's a really nice field. Uh, I've also played at Genesis, which is a little ways north of me. It's in Odessa. That's another really nice field I've played at. And of course the Mecca of Southeast United States Paintball, which is Central Florida Paintball, which is located in Lakeland. That's another amazing airball field. If you go there on pretty much any Sunday, you're going to see pro players practicing there, uh, damage practices there, especially coming into World Cup, you're going to see a lot of pro teams practicing there because it's like 15 minutes away from where they hold World Cup. But the, the majority of the time where we're, where we're usually playing at is Orbital Paintball on Saturday, Blitzkrieg Paintball on Sunday. You send me a PM in the forums or something like that. You want to come out and play with us? Absolutely. So, you know, I get that. Like, can I come out and play paintball? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's, you know, we're usually out there filming. We're not doing anything special. We're out there on the field, just slugging it out, just like everybody else. You're more than welcome to come out and play with us. And as a matter of fact, if we're doing an efficiency test, I can use the help. So, I, you know, I've, I've pulled the trigger enough times. I don't mind, you know, handing off a, a super gun to somebody and let them do the efficiency test, uh, just so uh, you know, just less effort on me because I'm lazy. So. Okay, so those are the two major things, um, good beginner setup and also where do we typically play paintball at here in Tampa and what days are we usually playing. So, okay, now, if you're not, you know, if you're only interested in paintball videos, I'm going to give you like two seconds here to shut the, shut the video off because I'll be like, Ew, he, he's talking about motorcycles, okay, give me his paintball channel. So, if you don't want to hear anything about motorcycles, because I put a video of me riding around, a lot of people had a lot of questions about that. So, now's your chance to shut the video off so you're like, Ew, this is a paintball channel, not a motorcycle channel. So go ahead, shut it off. Okay, now, um, the question a lot of people said, you know, you know, Mike, Mike, you know, I'm, I'm interested in riding motorcycles. I want to learn about it and stuff like that. Okay, I've been riding motorcycles for quite a while. I think I got my first bike. I don't know. It's, it's been quite a while. I've had some 750s, thousand, and then my, my personal favorite bike is the the Hayabusa. That's my personal favorite. I know it's like, oh, so the, the ZX14 is so much faster. Okay, like it beat it in the quarter mile by like six one thousandths of a second. I don't give a shit. Okay, <laughs> don't like the way the ZX14 looks. Okay, I had a Hayabusa back many years ago, and I really like it. Okay, you want to ride motorcycles? You want to learn how? You know, first thing I would tell you to do is take the safety class, okay? I, I don't know exactly how much the safety class is now. I think Motorcycle Safety Institute, I think it's who it is that puts it on. Um, 
I think it runs three to four hundred dollars, and it is a lifesaver. Okay, it'll it'll save your life. I'm telling you that right now. It is just because you were 12 years old and you hopped on your cousin's dirt bike um, and you got it into second gear does not qualify you to hop on a sports bike or any other motorcycle with 150 horsepower and go driving down the road. Okay, bad idea. Bad bad idea. Okay, I strongly strongly recommend you go and take the safety course. It's like three, $400 and it will save your life. It is, it is a great course to take. Even if you've ridden dirt bikes as a kid, um, even if you think you know what you're doing, go take that course. They're gonna teach you so many things that, that you may not have ever even thought of. They'll, they'll prep you for situations that you don't even, that you can't even imagine. They've got tons of great tips. Usually the guys that are given the course have got you know, 40, 50, 60,000 miles on motorcycles and, and it is a lifesaver. Go take the course. You know, if you're just even moderately interested in motorcycle riding or maybe you just want to ride a motorcycle for the weekend, you know, and just, just kind of learn how they operate. Maybe it's been something, you know, I know a lot of people, you know, it's, it's a bucket list thing of mine. I've always wanted to ride a motorcycle. Go take that course. You are going to ride a motorcycle by, by the end of the course. I mean, it's usually the way they did it here in Tampa and it's done differently everywhere else. Um, Thursday night they had a um, Thursday I started on Thursday night and they had it was about three to four hours of in-class instruction um, then the next thing they had was starting on Saturday um, they basically started you pushing the motorcycle around they said if you run out of gas you're gonna have to know how to push a motorcycle so you know and by Sunday you know everybody was changing gears starting stopping turning figure eights you name it pretty much by the end of Sunday you knew how to ride a motorcycle now from that motorcycle safety class, for me, pretty much never riding a motorcycle, I hopped right on a GSX-R 750 and felt perfectly comfortable driving it around. So, you know, the little things I had to learn on my own and stuff like that, but I, at that uh, end of the class, I was able to safely operate a motorcycle. Um, the next question I get is, you know, what's a good beginner bike? Should I start out with a GSX-R, you know, or a GSX-R, a 600 or a 750? Get this question all the time. The thing you gotta understand about how motorcycles make their power. They don't make their power until very, very deep into the RPM range. So if you stay out of the upper RPMs, whether you're on a 600 or a 750 or even a Hayabusa, you're not going to know the difference. So, you know, what, what kind of bike you're riding on. So, you know, I, I say if you're going to start out, go ahead and get the 750. If you stay out of the upper RPMs, you're not going to get into that peak horsepower that the 750 has. And on top of that, after you've been riding for a little while and you really want to open it up, the 750 is going to have that little, you know, that additional power that the 600 is not going to have. So you might hang on to the bike a little bit longer, just because, you know, with, with a 600 you might get a little bit bored with the, you know, a little bit bored with the horsepower and you may want a little bit more instead of looking for aftermarket accessories. Well, if you already got a 750 stock, you know, that, that bike's going to be pretty fast. Now, keep in mind, 99% of the people, myself included, will, don't have the skill to even take full advantage of what a, the horsepower that a 600 has. So you know, keep that in mind also. But if I had to say, if I had to have the difference between the, the 600 or the 750, I'd probably say go with the 750. And also the 750 is going to have just a little bit more torque than if you're riding with your girlfriend or your wife. It's going to have that little bit of pull away power uh, when you're pulling away from a stoplight or something like that, that you may not stall the bike. Um, you know, I also say spare no expense when it comes to safety. Okay, that's very important. If you, you start riding, definitely pick up a good helmet, definitely pick up, you know, a good jacket. You know, um, pick up you know some good gloves. Make sure you're wearing your sneakers. Make sure you're trying to wear, you know, pants. You never know when you're going to go down. You really never know when you're going to go down. So you want to try to put as much fabric as you can, as much protection between you and the road. Um, and and you know when you first get your motorcycle, don't hop on an interstate. Don't hop on a, um, you know, don't hop. Don't go to a place where there's a ton of traffic. Go to an industrial park and and. Just practice, you know, practice with your, um, you know, practice with your braking, with your, uh, you know, your clutch, your throttle control, stuff like that. So, you know, you don't really want to go from the dealership right through downtown New York, okay? <laughs> Bad idea. Find yourself a nice industrial park, quiet place, maybe a plaza, go behind there and just kind of putt around a little bit and just, just really kind of get a feel for how your motorcycle rides and handles and stuff like that. Um, that brings us to another tip. If you're buying a brand new motorcycle, you know, ask to see if they can have one of their mechanics drive it around a little bit, put some mileage on the bike, and rough up the tires a little bit, okay? Especially if it's your first motorcycle and you're buying it brand new. The, uh, you know, the, motor, the tires when they're brand new are like glass. I mean, they're super slick. They have no traction whatsoever, and even just the tiniest tug and throttle is going to cause you to spin out. You know, if you 
grab too much front brake, get too much, you know, rear too, too much throttle, it's gonna break loose. So ask to see if maybe one of the motorcycle mechanics can kind of take it around, put maybe 10, 15 miles on the bike. It's only gonna take them a couple minutes and come back and that way your tires are at least somewhat roughed up um, to, to at least get you home or get you to a safe place where you can get familiar with the motorcycle. So, um, picking out motorcycles, you know, you, you gotta, you know, if, if you, you gotta also, also ask yourself, what are you gonna be looking to do with your motorcycle mostly, okay? If you're looking to stunt the motorcycle, if you're learning to do wheelies and stoppies and stuff like that, don't go out and buy a $15,000 motorcycle, okay? <laughs> this is not a, you know, this is not a stunt motorcycle. Get yourself a, an R6 or an old Fireblade or something like that and beat that thing to death, okay? You, you don't wanna go out there with a brand new, you know, sparkling motorcycle and try to learn how to do stunts on that. Bad idea, okay? Get yourself a Bandit. You can get yourself a Bandit for, you know, maybe, Three, four thousand dollars a Suzuki Band, a phenomenal wheelie machine. Okay, great bike to learn how to do stunts on, especially wheelies and stuff like that. Um, you know, if you're looking to race, you know, you know, a six hundred may be all that you need if you're just looking to club race. You know, get yourself a six hundred, get yourself some leathers. You know, learn learn where you can go race and stuff like that, and, and you can get into the club racing, which is you know I've heard is a lot of fun. I haven't done it yet, but I heard it's a lot of fun. So. For me, my favorite thing to do motorcycle riding is two up riding with my wife. I love Jen being on the back of this. It's, you know, this bike for us fits us really well. It's got, you know, it's got a, you know, weighted, uh, weighted pedals. It's, it's smooth. It's got a nice big rear seat. Um, it's got plenty of power and that's, that's why I really like the Hayabusa. For me and Jen, it just fits us great and it's just very enjoyable when we, we get to go out and ride. So um, that's, that's really what I like to do for motorcycle riding. For me, I like two-up riding. I like riding with my wife on the back and just this bike just fits us for it. So, you know, you really got to ask yourself if you, you know, if you're trying to learn how to motorcycle ride, but you secretly want to get into stunting and stuff like that, well, you know, adjust accordingly. Take a look at what's a good stunt bike and, and you know, Go and pick that. Usually, it's a beater motorcycle. You're gonna beat the shit out of it. You're gonna wreck it. It's gonna fall down. It's gonna fall over. And you don't want to be picking up a brand new, you know, a, a brand new bike to be doing that with. That's a bad idea. I mean, it's just a waste of money. So, I think that's about it um, for uh, for uh, you know my tips on motorcycle riding. If you guys like, if you guys want me to do more tips, I'll put them up on the Mikey USF channel. So I'm not here then. Yeah, the people channel, you know. So. Uh, but it, you know, it, riding motorcycles is every bit as fun as you ever imagined it to be. It's a lot of fun. I love doing it. It's just relaxing for me, and uh, I just really enjoy riding. So, I um, think that's about it. Um, but you guys, let me know down below if you guys want me to do more motorcycle channels. I'll put them over on the Mikey USF channel. More, more motorcycle videos I'll put on the Mikey USF channel. We can go from there. Take it easy.